Here we have a real relic of the past, a vintage Edwards 6500 fire alarm control panel. Today we're going to go over the wiring, what commonly fails, all the components in this panel, and just about everything you'd ever want to know. So let's get started. Opening the door up, we can reveal the internals, the dead front. One of these panels is missing. That's one of the most common issues you'll find is these panels. You breathe the wrong way or look at them the wrong way and they'll fall right out. They're held in with these little spring clips, but they kind of suck. Um, here you can see the main controls to reset the panel, trouble silence, all that. Uh, this is our notification zone, and this is our initiating zone. Often there's uh, two screws here, but they're almost always missing. So it flips forward. There's two rivets on the bottom that hook it in. So you can flip this dead front forward and lift it out of the panel. So I'm going to lift straight up, and out it comes. So they made the 6500 about as big as you can imagine. This is the smallest one you could buy. It's got uh, two NAC cards and one zone card. So let's have a look at what we're looking at inside of this thing. The door wants to fall open. The best thing to do, grab yourself an end of line plate and just stick it in the bottom there and it'll keep the door open. So this is our main power transformer. These are the controls and main lights including the ground fault light. Uh, one thing worthy of note, older 6500s have no ground fault detection. Some of them have limited ground fault detection meaning they can detect ground faults on the alarm zone only or the signal circuit only. And I believe this model can detect ground faults on both circuits. So that's pretty nice. Uh, this is the circuit board, the main control circuit board in here, and it's mounted horizontally. It slides into a socket. This is the battery charger board. This is the circuit breaker for the battery charger. This is the circuit breaker for the main panel. Um, these are the circuit breakers for the alarm circuit. These circuit breakers are horrid. They, they go bad all the time. So a lot of times, if you take it and you just give it a good... and then you reset it, uh, you'll be back to normal. This is the very annoying buzzer. Um, this is your power inputs on this side as well as some connections for enunciators and accessories. And I believe there's a relay here, but we'll go over that later. Um, one thing worthy of note, if you have less than all four cards in each section, you will need this short card here. You can see it's just a simple circuit board and it's got a little jumper. The fire alarm panel will not work correctly without these present. You can see there's a part number, and these are, I believe, universal between signal and zone. Yes, they're the same. So signal and zone. So those are required or the panel will not work correctly. You will get trouble. Let's take out each of these cards and examine them more closely. So this is the initiating circuit card. It has a relay on it. Uh, these diodes here, we have some resistors up here, and then these two lamps, the one on the left hand side facing down is our trouble indicator, and the one on the right hand side is our alarm indicator. This fire alarm panel, it's a 50-50 I see with these, but it will go into trouble uh, if any of these bulbs are burned out and they're little incandescent light bulbs. So make good use of that lamp test button if you're looking for trouble. Now let's take a look at the alarm card. So it's just got one light, which is a trouble. This is for overloads. In case the panel gets um, too much current draw, this will trip, or it'll just trip if you um, offend it or look at it the wrong way. That, that relay clicks on for the alarm circuit. So the contacts, sometimes the contacts will burn, especially if you're working with a coded system. This will click out to do the codes. There'll be a module in here with a mechanical code wheel. This one only, this particular panel is only capable of a continuous output on the NAC circuit. I don't believe they made this panel with one uh, with audible silence, um, but that lets the strobes run. But nobody's really using that anymore in a lot of places. It depends. This is one of the most critical failure components: is this relay. This is the alarm relay that belongs right up in there above where the reset button is in the back. 
This relay, look at it, it's crispy. These always look crispy in these panels. And I think a lot of these panels get thrown away because this relay goes all, all messed up. So for fire alarm collectors or people that don't care about it being UL listed or original, um, you can sub this out for a 30 volt relay. This transformer often cranks out more like 28 volts or so and it just burns this, this relay up. Like it's really not good. So I would suggest throwing in a 30 volt relay but I'm going to keep this one for the time being because it's what I have on hand. This goes in there. So let's get started with our wiring. So we're going to cover both class A and class B wiring. Um, we're going to start with our alarm initiating zone. So we're going to need an initiating device. And I'm choosing to use a simplex fire alarm pull station. So we can put that down on the table. There it goes. It doesn't want to sit up right. And we're going to need a resistor plate. Like so. And the resistor. So, here's the resistor that you need for this thing. Focus. That's the resistor. So you're going to need that, and we're going to have to get some wire. So let me get this all, and I will cover the wiring. So I think it's imperative that I take a minute to go over some theory here, uh, just so that we're all on the same page of what we're talking about. So there's two schemes in which you can wire a fire alarm circuit. There's class A and class B in a conventional system. We're not talking about addressable here. That's a whole other story. So the class B system, from the panel, we go through our initiating devices and to our end of line resistor. Whereas with class A, it goes through our initiating devices and then back to the panel. Now one common confusion here or mistake is that you need to ensure that this wire is in a separate conduit. So I couldn't have one conduit from the panel to my pull station and then back in the same conduit. The wire has to return in another conduit. So keep that in mind or you will fail inspection. Um, the first setup that we're going to do here is this class B setup. So I've got it wired here. So from our terminals 3 and 4, we have the wire. The reason for using the Ethernet cable is that it's a lot easier to see on camera, especially when I'm going to have a bunch of wires in this panel. And it comes down here. And it goes across to our pull station, so you can have as many as you want. But you can see it's just wired to either side of the pull station, and then it continues on to our end of line resistor at the very end. So you would have a bunch of devices in between here in a real system. So that that's exactly what we have going on here. So let's power on the fire alarm panel and see if this works. So I'm going to silence the trouble warning. So that there means that it's silenced, that blinking. On our initiating circuit card, you can see the trouble light is not on. It's, it's not illuminated. So let me pull the pull station and we'll see this zone go into alarm. So the light on the uh, right hand side should come on when this is an alarm. There you go. You can see the trouble lights click off, and that goes on, meaning it's an alarm. So if I hit reset, nothing happens, and that's actually caused by that relay having a bad set of contacts. So what I'm going to do is shut off the power and turn it back on to reset the system. So the power has been turned off to the panel. And there we go. I have made a critical error, which is that I left the pull station pulled. So let me reset it, and we will come back in a second. So allow me here to demonstrate the supervision. So this is our zone one. Our zone one is wired to the pull station as we saw earlier. Here's our end of line plate. Here's our wiring. I'm going to take this pair of wire cutters and I'm simply going to cut one of these wires. Doesn't matter which one anywhere along the loop. Watch what happens. There you go. See it's in trouble. Notice I've cut this wire. So um, anywhere along the wire, anywhere along the circuit, either wire if it gets broken that trouble light will come on uh, now I'm going to test the uh, ground fault 
circuitry in this panel. So let's say we're having a real bad day and the wire gets skimmed. That wire is still hooked up. Watch this. I'm touching it to that screw. Ground service required. So the panel is seeing that there's a short to ground. So now let me remove this and I believe if I hit reset the ground fault should go away. See ground service? Oh no, it just fades out. It takes a minute. I guess if it's intermittent it does that. Um, so that's the two types of supervision the circuit has. And then our alarm supervision. So we can put it into alarm again. The trouble lights do go off when it's an alarm. Um, one thing that you're going to notice, so none of the trouble lights are illuminated. Obviously there's no lamps behind these ones because there's no cards. Um, all of this will go out when it's an alarm and there is no general alarm light like on a modern fire alarm panel. There's only that one. And um, to silence your fire alarm you would push this button. That should disable the bells. And then to reset the system you press and hold. If you have uh, certain smoke detectors you're going to have to hold that for a few seconds to give them a chance to reset. Um, lamp test. See that's working? So let's now move on to wiring the class A circuit for the initiating. Alright so now it's wired in the class A manner. So we have one wire, one set of wires running out to our device and then one pretend it's in another conduit coming back into the panel. The reason why we have a trouble light is that this card is not the one that's designed for class B, or sorry class A. This is the class B model of the card. You can get a class A card and a class B card. This one is not compatible with class A, that's why it's in trouble. But one thing that's important to remember is that you get these polarities here correct. Because if these are not correct, the system will automatically go into alarm as soon as you power it on. So we can see that it works when we pull the pull station. System is in alarm. So there you go. Now let's move on to our bell circuit. So now I've got the bell circuit wired in a class B manner. <clears throat> it wires exactly the same as the pull stations or initiating circuit does. Um, just instead of pull stations you have notification devices. So you can see which terminals 1 and 4 and 2 and 3 are for the return. So 1 and 4 come back and it goes off to the bell. It's imperative that every bell in the circuit is um, wired with the correct polarity or it won't work, it'll give it trouble. And then at the end we have again the same resistor. So this one's in trouble because it's not actually hooked up to anything. But now we can see if we pull the pull station where we'll have this motor moving. I took off the gong so it won't be too loud. Alarm light. So you can see the alarm silence features aren't functioning. So now we can get to the more complex part which is our enunciation devices. So for one we have the actual enunciator. Along with that we have to hook up this trouble signal. Which is kind of interesting because it has three connections that we have to make. So if we look at this here, you can see the light blinks at the same rate as the trouble light in the panel. And that's with the wires hooked up between the plus and the L. So plus meaning positive and then L grounds it out. And the H, if you connect that one, you will get horn. And you can see it simply between the plus and the L there. And if you look at the H just below the orange wire, you can hook up the horn. I chose not to because um, it's very loud. Um, but if you, if you hook that up, it allows you to use the audible silence for the trouble in the panel to also silence this. You'll see in almost every building that has one of these, there'll be like an inch of tape over this little buzzer. This thing is extremely loud. It could make a fire alarm on its own. But that's how that goes. Now let's move on to our actual alarm zone enunciator. Okay, so now our enunciator is wired one end between terminal 12, and the other actually goes to terminal 2 on each of your zones. So let's say the first light on your enunciator would be terminal 2, the next light would be terminal 2 on this one, and so forth. And we can see this is mirrored up here. So these are for each of the lights, and then this is the common. So common goes down to that number 12, and this could go to zone 1, zone 2, and so forth. So now, if we pull this pull station, we have alarm, 
and we have annunciator light. And then once we reset the system, that light will go back off. All right, so we have our initiating zone, our bell zone, our trouble alarm, and our annunciator. So this is exactly how you'd find the system kind of set up in a working environment for the most part. Let's perform the lamp test. See those bulbs, all the bulbs are working. So no trouble here and no trouble here on account of our closed circuits. Bell 1 has a trouble because nothing's connected to it. I'm only using Bell 2. So let's pull the pull station. So I shut off the power to the panel because I can't get it to um, reset with the button. I have to do some repair. Now that the pull station's reset, you can bring back power, and we are back to a normal non-alarm state. Uh, that one. So to demonstrate again, once again, our trouble circuit, I've got our wire cutters. See, I cut the bell circuit we have a trouble. Now let's go to our pull station and there we have a trouble on that loop so that's all working. So that's a good overview of the Edwards 6500 I hope you enjoyed and if you have any opinions or comments or anything you want me to know leave it in the comments below I'm always open to learning new things. Take care.